What is up to all of my little unicorns, new and old, it's your girl Wes Any Ray back again with another information filled video. Now today's video has been highly requested because I've kind of been talking about it a little bit and people were telling me that they're interested. So I wanted to make sure that I came to you explaining fully my process of making almond milk at home. And before I get into this video, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to my current subscribers because you guys are literally everything to me. And if you are not a part of that crew yet, don't worry, okay? Don't worry. I'm not mad at you at all. All you have to do to make it right though is go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the bell notification right next to it to make sure that you are notified whenever I make a new video. And if you love this video, make sure that you also give it a huge thumbs up to let YouTube and me know that you like this kind of content. Now hopping right into this video, I love making my own almond milk because A, it's very cheap and I will go over the details of that in just one second. B, you don't have to worry about consuming any harmful preservatives or sweeteners because of buying the store-bought almond milk and see I never have to worry about almond milk going bad once I open it because I know exactly how much I'm gonna use for the week so I make my almond milk accordingly now I make plain almond milk for about three cents per ounce compared to buying it off the shelf for about six cents per ounce maybe all of the other ingredients that they add in there are what make it more expensive when you buy it from the store maybe it's the packaging that you're constantly buying just to throw it away that makes it expensive and even though most of these cartons that the almond milk comes in are recyclable still the idea of making things just to throw them away just doesn't sit right with me so I just try to stay away from it when possible of course there are times when like you'll see I use a plastic bag that I already had when I'm freezing my almonds but the more you can save on things like that the better so for this particular recipe I'm actually gonna soak about 11 cups of almonds all at once which will be super convenient in the future as I won't have to do this process again for a really long time all you have to do is wash them and cover them with cold water for about 8 to 48 hours and then you can begin the process of rinsing and freezing them so I go ahead and pour all the almonds out once they've sat for a while then I just rinse them off to get all that thick liquid off of them so typically I do try to stay away from things such as plastic bags I usually pack up everything in glass containers I use glass to drink with and eat with and everything like that but today I'm going to use a plastic bag that I got from my mom's house she used to do a lot of catering for parties and things like that so we always had like tons of plastic bags on hand which is terrible I know but I grabbed some from her house so that I can at least put them to use and they don't just get thrown away and this is going to be really helpful because I plan to keep these almonds in the freezer for quite a while and I would hate to put my big Pyrex in the freezer for weeks if not a couple of months depending on how often I make almond milk. So this one is obviously the almond that is dry it looks dry it has more texture on it versus this one which is a lot smoother it's a lot more plump this is a soaked almond. And then here's a close up just so that you guys can see the difference between the soaked almond, which is on the left hand side, and the dry almond, which is on the right hand side. So I had actually been meaning to make this video for a while. These almonds actually stayed in the freezer for about three weeks before I took them out and decided to make some almond milk with them. So I ended up using about a cup and a half of the pre-soaked almonds with six cups of alkaline water. I also added some dates for sweetening. You guys will see that towards the end of the video, I actually end up adding a few more. I love using dates to sweeten milks and smoothies and things like that because they're naturally sweet and they don't leave any type of weird aftertaste. I always add the dates before I go ahead and strain the almond milk because they don't really blend too well and I don't like having chunks of anything floating inside of my milk. Maybe it's years of drinking like animal milk that kind of like weirded me out mentally when it comes to things floating around or any type of like chunkiness inside of my milk. I don't even like the word chunky y'all. I don't know why I keep saying it, but it's, it's just better to do it first and then strain it after. So you can go ahead and pop that onto your blender until the almond milk looks nice and smooth, until it looks like everything's broken down really well. And then once it's all done, you can either use a nut bag or a piece of cheesecloth to strain your almond milk. I personally like using a nut bag because the holes are a lot tinier and closer together so cleanup is just a lot easier for me. And if you are curious to know what almond pulp looks like, here is a visual of it right here. And if you don't want to waste it, you can plan to make your almond milk on a day that you want to make some baked goods because it's really good for things like crackers. I'm actually going to make some banana bread. You could even make almond flour. If you want to make something like almond flour though, just make sure that you add your dates after you strain it and then probably strain it again just to make sure that there's no clumps 
floating around inside of your almond milk. So here's your delicious almond milk. At this point, I usually taste it to make sure that it doesn't need any more dates or anything. And if it does, I add the dates and then I strain it again, just like I said, to make sure there's nothing floating around in my almond milk. And this last part is optional, as was the whole inclusion of the dates, but you can add vanilla. I usually like to use anywhere from a half tablespoon to a full tablespoon of vanilla. It might sound like a lot, but I'm just like a vanilla type of girl. I also always include pink Himalayan sea salt because it does a really good job of bringing out and balancing the flavor and sweetness of the almond milk. And you guys, you do not have to use as much or as little as I did, depending on your taste. Just do it until it tastes good to you. Finally, all you have to do is package it and serve. Because I used frozen almonds when I made this, it's actually already cold, so it tasted really good. And there you have it, you guys. Almond milk that you can make again and again without prepping multiple times. This recipe is affordable, it's delicious, and it's also really good for your body and the environment. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave me a little unicorn emoji in the comment section below if you made it all the way to the end. Make sure to also like, subscribe, comment, and share. Follow all of my social media accounts right down there and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.